So anyway, today's case is fire. Anyway, so today's case is about a young woman who goes by the name of Rihanna Mert. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Baki Sikhale and we're diving into yet another true crime case. I know for the past few weeks I've been doing a lot of true crime. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about social affairs. Um, there's someone that I'm trying to get onto the show and so... Um, <laughs> fingers crossed. So for now we're just going to keep riding on the true crime wave so today 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 we have yet another missing persons case and i've really grown so much interest to these missing person cases to be honest because most of the time they just man i smell a rat and it kind of keeps your brain going you know to be like thinking like what could have happened or like kind of like detective work you know like investigate like i wonder well so please also in the comments my fellow investigators and detectives <laughs> let's try to get to the bottom of it let's spread the news let's do what it is that we can and you know hopefully try to get a break in these cases like i think it'll be so exciting if like not even if like like when these cases you know get solved and these people get found and like i come back to the channel and like we're all just celebrating together as a family that dude we spoke about this case and now the person is found it would be it would be nice i look forward to this anyway so today's case is by a woman who goes by the name of rihanna mushreshre who was born on the 15th of august 1994 born to parents stanley and paul mushreshre she was two she was one of she was the last born actually of two kids she had an older brother now Rihanna lived in Kalishiwe, which is in Kimberley, and not not so long after that, her parents got a divorce, and Rihanna then stayed with her mom, and her older brother moved in with Rihanna's father. Now at the time of Rihanna's disappearance, she attended Kimberley Girls High, and you know when her parents describe her, they describe her as a pride and joy, especially to her mom. You know, lost ones, pride and joy. She loved her. She was trusting. You know, she was very respectful young lady. You know, she was she was bright. She was a very intelligent child as well so you know she was her parents pride and joy her parents loved her now a month before rihanna's disappearance on the 23rd of january 2010 her and her friend genelwe mutawum were walking back home when it was that they were passed by a black bmw and at the time it was one of the latest bmws and so you know they were just basically admiring the bmw it was a beautiful bmw and so upon it passing them it reversed you know and so as it reversed there were two males uh, one in the passenger and the other one was driving and so then the man in the passenger seat um said his name was Tabo and the man that was driving went by the name of Robert. Now Tabo asked Rihanna you know for her phone number and she gave it to him and he just basically wanted to test to make sure that she was giving him the right number and so he called the number and then she was also now then able to save his number. Around five o'clock that same day you know Tabo contacted Rihanna and said that they were in a street called Greenside and you know would she be able to come so that they can hang out and she basically just like brushed it off because she was just like nah dude around eight o'clock to nine o'clock the same evening tabo decided to call rihanna again you know to see if he could get her to come out the house so that they could hang out and Ginelwe, who is um rihanna's friend said no they're not going there um rihanna's brother was also there hanging out with them at the time and he was also like no they're not going there also this guy like it's the first time you get my number and like you, you you're calling me so many times like you're trying to see me like ah. now weeks later on the 20th of february 2010 a day before rihanna went missing rihanna and Ginelu on that saturday basically went to church and then they went over to one of their houses you know just to chill to relax and so then later that day they split and so then rihanna texted Ginelu on mix it back in the mix it days Texted Ginelwe on Mixit and you know like to Ginelwe guess where I'm going tomorrow Someone is taking me out for shopping guess who's taking me out for shopping And so then Ginelwe basically guessed like someone else who was not the person who was obviously taking her out for shopping And so she was like no you know Tabo's taking me out for shopping And this was the first time Ginelwe heard about Tabo you know in almost a month Like uh, it was a, 
a few weeks you know that she had went that had went by without her hearing about Tabo and so then um Rihanna tells Ginevra that no Tabo said that um he was gonna spend 800 rand at identity you know to buy her an outfit because she was going to a Lira concert and so you know she needed clothes for the concert and so then Rihanna asked Ginevra if she wanted to come with the next day which was the Sunday you know to go um to buy the clothes for the concert and so then unfortunately Ginevra would not be able to go with um Rihanna to you know shop the next day and so she had actually asked rihanna if they could move it to the following weekend you know the shopping to the following weekend but the concert was actually the following weekend i think on the saturday so um rihanna would then be going alone to do the shopping now on the following day on the 21st of february 2010 you know rihanna woke up she got ready she bathed and so she passed her mom actually on her way out her mom was actually busy with the garden like with the lawn and so then um rihanna told her mom that no she was actually going to town with Ginebra because someone had deposited money into Ginebra's account into Ginebra's bank account and so then her mom was like no it's okay you can go because her mom trusted Ginebra I mean they've been friends for a long time like her mom was comfortable with Ginebra so she knew that the girls would be okay Rihanna's mom then gave Rihanna an electricity card and a hundred rand and asked her to get electricity while it was that she was in town and also instructed her not to come back late because Rihanna's mom was going to um the aunt's funeral and so then she wanted Rihanna to then come back home and you know prepare dinner so the mom would be gone for most of the day so then Rihanna cannot come back late now around one o'clock Rihanna's mom leaves for the funeral and is back around five o'clock that evening but um Rihanna still isn't home but it doesn't raise too much of a concern because her mom is just assuming that no you know she'll probably she's probably still with Guinea Lumi they're just hanging out and she'll make her way back around six o'clock that evening rihanna's mom decides to go back to the funeral and is back at nine o'clock in the evening and comes back to a home that is peach black there is no indication that rihanna came home at any time and so at this point now then the mom is very very worried and so she decides to contact um rihanna and guinea but both their phones go to voicemail now rihanna's mom you know decided to wait for rihanna basically the whole night and ended up falling asleep on the couch at around four o'clock in the morning of the next day still rihanna was not home and so then rihanna's mom decided to contact rihanna's father to ask if maybe she came there to sleep over contacted some of rihanna's other family members to find out if maybe she was there and as well as some of rihanna's friends now this is the following day obviously on the 22nd of february 2010 when it is that uh, Rihanna's mom decides to go to Ginelo's house to find out if maybe Rihanna had actually slept there and I mean it's Monday you know they should be going to school and upon arriving at Ginelo's house Rihanna's mom you know does find Ginelo getting ready to go to school and she asks if she has heard from Rihanna and Ginelo says that no she actually hadn't spoken to Rihanna the whole of Sunday so the 21st she was not in contact with Rihanna and obviously this is a major you know concern for her mom because from what it is that her mom knew her mom knew that her and Ginebue were together and that they would be going to town but however now Ginebue is saying that they were not together so then Rihanna's mom decides that she's going to go to South Sea together with Rihanna's dad to just try and find out you know which number she called last or which number called her last and to see if maybe they can contact that number and to then be able to know who she was with or who was the last person she was in contact with. Now they were able to get some assistance from South Sea and so there was a number that it is that they got that had actually contacted Rihanna three times and she had also contacted that same number and so then Rihanna Rihanna's father decided to contact that number on a public um like telephone and so then upon the person on the other line answering the phone it was a man who said that his name was France right and so then Rihanna's dad asked like do you know Rihanna have you heard from Rihanna anything like that and so then France said that he didn't even know who they were talking about or what was going on and then France hung up the phone they then decided to contact France again and this time it went to um, voicemail and so the voicemail basically said that um, hi my name is France Oliphant please leave your name your number message you know just the typical voicemail but the name that was then given was France Oliphant now France Oliphant was a 38 year old man who we thought was Tabo however his name is France Oliphant he was arrested on the 26th of February 2010 um, and basically he was arrested in connection to um, 
Rihanna's disappearance and kidnapping. However, there was only circumstantial evidence, and the circumstantial evidence was the phone calls that you know he you know happened between him and Rihanna. Now, the period between when it is that France was arrested and when it was that he would appear for his bail hearing, Rihanna's parents did try to go you know to talk to him to find out if. Um, there was any information or anything that he would like give them but apparently he was very rude he said that he had nothing like it when it came to his their daughter's case or disappearance he wasn't going to talk to them about anything because he doesn't know anything like he was just very dismissive and he wasn't really trying to help out in any way shape or form now on the 27th of february 2010 rihanna's phone and the electricity card were handed over to her father they were found by a young boy who goes by the name of itumeleng boysen and so itumeleng says that he found the phone and the electricity card in an open field on his way to church and so the electricity card is basically what her like drew his attention and then not so far from the electricity card was her phone and so he's thinking you're a phone like he's in high school like you know so he basically started to use the phone and so then he took it to school and you know he's basically just showing his friends and one of his female classmates you know that he was showing the phone to went through like the gallery and was seeing pictures of um Rihanna and so he she basically was like to him dude do you know this girl this girl is actually missing at the moment you should hand over the phone and stuff like that and Itumeleng just thought that you know she was just being jealous I mean really he found a phone and he's to use it and so upon then hearing about the case you know on the radio and like it was gaining some momentum then Itumeleng decided then on the 27th to hand over the phone to Rihanna's parents with the help of his parents. Now Tabo slash France had actually had prior charges as well of assault of rape and of arson he had actually tried to burn down the house of his ex-girlfriend with her in it and so then the circumstantial evidence from the calls with rihanna his ex and you know his prior charges as well there were also witnesses that you know spoke at the trial the witnesses being um Rihanna's mother, Genelo, who is Rihanna's friend, and Robert. Now, if you remember, Robert was the driver of the black BMW, who is also France's friend. Now, upon Robert taking the stand, Robert, who is who was the driver of the black BMW, he says that in that weekend, right, the weekend when it is that Rihanna went missing, what had happened was that um, France called him. And so, okay, let me try to explain it like this, right? So, Robert... The driver of the black bmw there's a house that he maintains and he looks after right of a friend who doesn't live in the country and so then france called him and asked robert if that house would be available for that weekend because he was obviously meeting up with a girl who we assume would be rihanna because they were meant to meet that sunday the sunday she disappeared so he wanted to basically take her to the empty house and so then france i mean sorry robert said that yes the house would be available for that sunday however robert says that when he did meet up with france on that day france was with the girl but the girl was not um rihanna the girl was a girl who is who goes by the name of Lerato. now on the 1st of february 2011 which is a year later to the 28th of february 2011 this is when the trial took place and sentencing took place on the 10th of May 2011 and France was given the 36 years so basically all his charges were basically put together and he was given 36 years. Now when Rihanna's mom spoke of her she spoke of her daughter you know in the present tense like Rihanna is you know like she spoke of her as someone who is still living however that wasn't the case for Rihanna's dad who would speak of Rihanna like in the past tense so he said that he felt that they needed to be be realistic and the chances of Rihanna still being alive at that point were very very slim so he didn't think that she was still alive now in 2019 there was a YouTube video that was making its rounds and so it was a homeless woman um, the video was of a homeless woman and the resemblance between Rihanna and that woman shocking like people believe that that was probably rihanna like the shape of their head was the same rihanna's mom when she explains it says that the woman had like a beauty spot rihanna also had a beauty spot the woman had braces right and when rihanna went missing she also had braces and so then the woman the the, the woman was meant to meet with the family you know and like dna um 
DNA samples were taken as well. And while it was that they were waiting for the DNA, that's when Rihanna's mom was basically talking about, like, they look exactly the same. Like, chances of them being the same person or that being Rihanna are very, very high. However, she didn't want to, you know, get her hopes up too high because, you know, anything could happen at that time. The DNA did come out negative, which does make me sad. I don't know why, but it does. And that woman was actually also offered help the homeless woman because she was addicted to drugs and you know so forth and so every year in Kimberley there's an annual soccer tournament that is named after Rihanna Moshwishwe which is you know for the fight um, against violence against women and children as well as human trafficking against women and children. Now Rihanna's mother and Rihanna's family and parents are still on the search and are still looking for Rihanna and so if you have any information or anything that you think could help the case please 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 I'll attach contact details in the description box as well as to the screen. Don't forget to like, to comment, to subscribe. Let me know what other cases you would like for me to, to cover. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time. Bye. Becoming a professional, bless.